Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Deeper Dive. I am Bishop Joseph Walker of Mount Zion Church right here in Nashville, Tennessee. And wow, we are so excited to have you once again tuned in to this YouTube channel, Mount Zion Church Nashville, where we grow together. This is where we go deeper in God's word. We're excited to have you connected today because we believe that this is a a very intentional place for people to become disciples of Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we'd love to connect with you wherever you are watching from. Uh, make certain that you follow us on our social media platforms at mtzionnashville.org, mtzionnashville. Make sure you also follow me at Joseph Walker 3. That's Joseph Walker, the number three. Follow my wife at Dr. Steph uh, Walker, and we would love to connect with you. And we appreciate you so much. We're very excited about all that God continues to do through the Mount Zion Church, and we are really geeked and excited about uh, what we believe is going to happen uh, next month in the most extraordinary uh, marriage conference on the planet. We call it Becoming a Couple of Destiny. My wife and I are hosting it, and guess what? People are registering. like It's happening all around the country. People are coming into this. I don't want you to miss out on your opportunity to strengthen your marriage. Listen, if you are focused in on that area. This is something for you. Register right now. Uh, it's going to be at the Hilton Hotel in Nashville, Tennessee. You can register at mtzionnashville.org. It's going to happen on March the 30th through April the 2nd, and we want to see you in the house. So make certain that you register. We appreciate that. And also, as you watch this uh, channel, I pray that you will like, share, subscribe, and uh, make certain that you comment and uh, if you want interactive notes, you can always download the Mount Zion app at Mount Zion Nashville to your phone or your smart device, and you can get interactive notes to these lessons that we teach every single week. We want to give you an opportunity now to worship God in giving. We are grateful every time we come together to be able to share in giving. We are a generous ministry, and we appreciate you for being a part of that process. And today we want you to sow as you're watching. Make sure you give. The platforms are right here. Make sure you text to give. Give in a way that honors God. And we thank you so much in advance for sowing into this ministry. I'm going to pray as always, and we're going to get right back into this wonderful series on emotional healing. I cannot wait today to share with you about how do we move our habits forward in habit health. So, Father, thank you for the privilege we have now to study your word Thank you for the spirit of generosity that flows in this ministry as folks are giving to the glory of God. Open up our spirits and our minds so our faith might be strengthened. And we thank you. It's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. So habits, let's talk about it. We've talked about our heads, our hearts. Let's go right into our habits now. What does a healthy habit look like? Often we think about habits. Habits are really the basis for your success. Sometimes habits can be the basis for your downfall. We often associate habits with negative things. Often drug habits, substance abuse, destructive habits, pornography, etc. But they're also good habits. Habits of working out regularly, eating, praying, fasting, eating healthy rather. I think these are things that we have to understand a habit is something that you do regularly, consistently, and uh, they always have an end game. There's always a goal uh, behind every habit. A habit is something that is important for us to really lean in on today because uh, it is important that we understand the amount of mental effort it takes uh, to either break a bad habit or to sustain a good one. And uh, I believe that as we move forward in this teaching today, you're going to get some principles on both. Uh, and there are habits that hinder our overall productivity. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been working, trying to be productive, and then all of a sudden you start scrolling on social media, or you, you, know, you started doing trivial tasks that took you away from the actual main thing? Mental habits are important, keeping our mind focused while we're focused forward in 2023, because wherever you are distracted, often you default to negative habits that can hinder your ability to be productive. And you're that person that wakes up and says, I wish I had more hours in the day. When in fact, God has given you all the hours you need to be productive. It's just how you manage the time. And what are the time gremlins in your life that are robbing you of the productive time because you are given that time to poor habits. Many people try desperately to break bad habits. You know we all do. And uh, I want to help you today understand how to apply kingdom principles 
uh, to that so that you can actually once and for all break bad habits. Now, you ever wonder why it's easy to pick up a bad habit, but it's so hard to break them? Well, the enemy desires to keep you in bondage. Be very clear. The enemy's desire is to keep you in bondage. Now, what is bondage? Well, it is defined as a state of being like a slave, a slave to something, to be incarcerated by it. So the term bondage would easily mean that it's a state of being like a spiritual slave. In general, uh, we, we could use the term spiritual bondage to refer to anything that keeps us from being fully submitted to the Lordship and the power of Jesus Christ in our lives. The phrase spiritual bondage is not that it is found in the Bible, but I think the concept is important for us to understand. What is it that has you bound that you cannot fulfill the will of God for your life? John chapter 8 and verse 34, hear the word of the Lord. Most assuredly, Jesus answered them, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin is a slave to that sin. Acts chapter 8, verse 23, for I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by iniquity. Listen at 2 Peter 2, 19. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. And then, of course, in Romans chapter 6, verse 15 and 16, what then? Shall we say, shall we sin because we are under law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are the ones, slaves whom you obey? whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. In all of these passages, there, there is a common denominator that sin, which separates us from God, has the intent to bring about death and ultimately the patterns that sin takes us through keeps us in bondage. We're like people who are trapped, enslaved to it doing its bidding ultimately to destroy us in the end. I think it's important for you to understand that Christ came to liberate you from that bondage, to bring you freedom in him. Sin wants to incarcerate, Christ wants to liberate. I want you to think about that. I want you to write that in your notes. Sin wants to incarcerate, but Christ came to liberate. You see, because God breaks the chains of bondage. It does not mean that believers cannot experience spiritual or demonic oppression as a result of their own sinful choices or even their upbringing. Sometimes when someone becomes a believer, they have lived in a specific sin for so long, they don't even recognize it as such. They have normalized the dysfunction. And if a believer notices that he or she is still struggling with a consistent sin or habit that is unhealthy in their mindset, watch this, despite being saved or repeatedly asking God for forgiveness, they may need to take an additional step in order to find change. Which means, yes, you're saved, yes, you love the Lord, but you're wondering why I cannot break this because I've been living with it for so long. I've been keeping this habit, this pattern of negativity for so long. That's why Ephesians is so important. Chapter 4, verse 22 through 24. Hear the word of the Lord <laughs> that you put off. Listen, concerning your former conduct, you put it off, your former conduct, the old man which was growing corrupt according to the deceitful lust. All of us have that old man, that old space. But watch this. Verse 23 says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. 
So once I get in my relationship with Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean I'm perfect. It just means that my habits begin to change. I develop healthier habits, putting off the old man, the old lust, and now I'm replacing those bad habits with new habits, reading God's word, fasting, praying, putting myself in a position to grow spiritually so that I don't have to relapse back into the old behavior. It's really about my mindset, my habits. I say it all the time. It's heart, it's your head, your heart, your habits. Your head, your heart, your habits. So watch this. I want to give you five reasons why it's necessary to form good habits. Y'all, we got to get good habits out here. Habits are what you do, but shapes who you are. Think about it. Habits are what you do, but they shape who you are. Ultimately, over time, doing a thing over and over and over again, why an action turns into a character. A habit turns into a character. So watch this. Mark chapter 7, verses 20 to 23, and he said, What comes out of a man that defiles a man? For from within, out of the heart of men, proceeds evil thoughts, right? Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, and murderers, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. Things you've allowed to get in your spirit and your mind, you've been exposed to, those things are coming from within. Proverbs, however, chapter 4, verse 20 to 27, my son, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to these sayings. Let them not escape from your sight. Watch the area of focus, right? This is important because we're focused forward. Keep them within your heart. There it is, head, heart, right, habits. For they are life to those who find them, healing for all of their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech, but put devious talk far from you. Let your eyes, watch focus, look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you and ponder the path of your feet Then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. Why is that so important? Because it's all about focus. Habits have a lot to do with focus. Habits have a lot to do with saying I'm not focused on that. I'm focused on the will of God in my life. I'm razor sharp focus. Here's number two. You can change your habits. You absolutely can. You know in Jeremiah chapter 13 verse 23, can an Ethiopian change your skin or leopard his spots, the scripture says? Then maybe, may, may you also do good that are accustomed to doing, doing evil. In other words, the best thing about habits is that if you don't like them or they aren't working for you, your old habits can break. You can shift your energy and your focus and your discipline to a point where you desire healthier habits. But it's all about the energy of intentionality. If I want to eat better, I've got to focus on eating better. If I want to start working out, I've got to focus on doing that. It's the energy of intentionality. So watch this. I got to break. I got to look at it and say to myself, all right, if I'm eating healthy, do I want to add this pastry or not? Well, if I'm focused on my goal, then I then am not focused on the pastry. You get it? So it's about the energy. It's about making the right decisions. Here's number three. Good habits allow you to reach your goals. This is the ultimate end game. I want to come through and get to where God wants me to be. Proverbs 25, 1 through 6. A wise son heeds his father's instructions but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. A righteous man hates lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and comes to shame. 
Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Wow. Woo. Yeah, I tell people all the time, it's really about every day you wake up, you have like, you have these choices. Then you have to make decisions on those choices, which ultimately determine consequences. Think about that for a moment. So ultimately, right, habits have a lot to do. You can change your habits, but also habits have a lot to do with how you reach your goals. So if you're dreaming about becoming a marathon runner, you won't jump into the first marathon offered by the city without training, without discipline. So you've got to put in the meticulous work and preparation if you're going to be successful. This is important in reaching your goals. Being willing to say, I am shifting my habits or changing my habits to things that can help me reach my goal. What in your life today you're trying, that you're trying to reach? And what things can you say I'm doing habitually to prepare me to get to that goal? Am I saving money to get to the house? Am I working out to reach my health goals? Am I praying to reach my spiritual goal? See, here's number four. Habits set a foundation for a blessed life. Since your habits become you, the habit, whether good or bad, ultimately will set the tone for your entire life. Who you have become is a result of what you have done consistently. If you've got a habit of greeting your family with joy, then you're going to end up becoming a joyful person. If you develop a habit of eating vegetables for every meal, like I pray you did during the last month in the fast, <laughs> then you end up becoming a more healthier person. You have to set yourself up to win. Listen, set yourself up to win. Here's number five. Habits can replace motivation. Everyone has days, I know I do, but you just don't feel like it. You don't feel like exercising, you don't feel like working out, but when you develop the right habits, it will become second nature to you. It will become a part of who you are. It becomes a part of your DNA. Developing a foundation for good habits determines how your life plays out in the end. And so when I begin to think about it, I look at where I am in my life, I am the result of the habits I formed in my life. So how do you, how you choose consistent, consistency for victory? Let's talk about it. The common thread for a habit or to break a habit is consistency. I teach on this all the time. I talk to all my mentees about it. You gotta understand the power of consistency. Number one, make up your mind to do it. Just do it. You gotta get to a point where you do it. In 1896, an American track and field athlete named James Connolly ascended to victory. And he came to the podium at the first modern Olympic Games. He was the first Olympic champion in 1,400 years. Connolly embodied the motto, faster, higher, stronger. That's a good example for us in our own Christian life. This is why Paul reminds us in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. See, when you decide to follow Jesus, some things become secondary to you. They become secondary to you. But then some things you got to get rid of altogether. My desire for Christ and what I want to do in my life in 2023, you got to say, I'm just putting some things behind me. I'm done. I'm, I'm over it in my mind, my head, in my heart, and my habits. But let me share this with you. I think this will bless you in closing. It's about emphasize and exercise. Now, don't, don't, don't turn me off now. Listen, I, I know this is the third week of the second month of the year. You're probably thinking, I'm going to tell you to go to the gym. Well, I'm talking about you've got to exercise your faith. This year, you can't expect results that you've not worked for. All throughout the Bible, there's emphasis on exercising 
the form of godliness, self-control, righteousness, to train our spiritual muscles for better habits. You must study the word on a regular basis, apply it to your life. You ever thought about that? That what you work is what's gonna grow? I see people in the gym all the time, working their biceps, working their triceps, working their chest area, all of that because they wanted to grow. They wanted to grow, picking up heavy stuff. Spiritually, it's the same thing. If you want your prayer life to grow, if you want your relationship and your faith to grow, if you want your life to grow, you're going to have to go deeper. That's why you're on deeper dive now into God's word, carry this word, live this word. The same energy and intentionality that people have used for physical exercise is the same energy and intentionality you can use for your spiritual life. 1 Timothy 4 and 8, hear the word of the Lord in conclusion. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise to the life that now is and to the life which is to come. Yes, be healthy in your spirit, in your body. Eat right, take care of yourself, develop healthy habits. That's why church fit is so important. But also, ladies and gentlemen, remember, you got to make sure that your faith your prayer life, all of the spiritual virtues that are necessary for you to reach your goal are growing as well. What I pray today is that you are on a course for healthy habits. And I'm praying over your life today that every negative, every bad habit, every threatening habit to your destiny be broken off of you today. He's a habit breaker. I'm a living witness, and I pray this word has blessed you today. Maybe today you need a relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, he loves you so much. And the scripture says that we got to lay aside the weight that so easily besets us. Sin, the weight. So now it's time for you to say, Lord, let me develop new habits. I can't do this by myself. I need a relationship with you. If you do... We want to help you walk that relationship out. Text me now at salvation78228. If you want to recommit your life, you need a church home where you can grow. We're all about discipling you. Wherever you are around the globe, you can connect with our ministry simply by texting salvation to 78228. Thank you for listening in today. I pray you have been blessed for next week. Ooh, I am so excited because we're going to talk about hindrances. We've talked about head health, heart health, his habit health. We're going to talk about how to get past those hindrances so you can achieve what God has for your life. I want you to like. I want you to subscribe. I want you to share. I want you to comment. Let us know right here in the chat. Let us know. Send a comment and let us know how this Bible study has blessed you. But also take the link and share it with someone else and be a digital disciple and watch how this word will bless them as they move forward to healthier emotions with better habits. Thank you, and may God bless you, is my prayer.